I wanted to share with you a mental model of Salabim. Basically to show you the inner workings of Salabim as far as I understand it and how the Salabim code relates to the future event list and the trace while the code is running. Since the simulation is all about parallel uh, things happening at the same time, it's quite difficult to wrap your head around. So that's why I created this small presentation to have a very basic code and see actually what's happening. And that would help you uh, a lot to write better code, I think. I think if I would have understood this in the beginning of my learning process, I think it would have helped me a lot. So let's start explaining the first step. So when we now analyze this simple code, we first see we import Salabim as a sim. Next, we initialize our classes, our two classes, car and bike. Then we create our environment, similar environment. And line 15, you see in the trace also that there is a component called main that's created. This is created automatically by uh, Salabim on the, on, the, on the behind the scenes. It's used to control our environment. And main is now in a so-called current state. The next thing that happens is we have our car that's created. It's put on the future event list to be activated at time zero. And uh, we have our bike next that's created and also needs to be activated at time zero. Since bike is created after car, it would be on the future event list also activated after the car is activated. Since the priorities are both the same, this is how the scheduling works. The next thing is we have our um, main component that's now in a scheduled state. We call in the run. So at time 10, the main is activated. And that basically means that then the program would stop. Now here it actually starts getting interesting because here we are running our program. We're running our simulation. And the first thing that happens once you hit the run statement is that Salabim looks in the future event list and says, what is the first component that needs to be taken off the future event list? And actually, we need to run this component. We need to start running the process. And that's the car. It's supposed to be activated at time zero, taken off the event, event, uh, event list. That's what happens here. The car is taken off. And on line four, on the trace, you see a little plus behind the four. That means here it's actually activated. The car is now current. It's in its current process. That's one of the eight states Salabim has. Current state, it actually means you're in control of the process. It's now in the instantaneous time between two events. And the car is in the current state and it now just looks for the next statement. It starts running the process because it hasn't run the process yet. It's just starting. So the first thing what happens is after you go into the while true, it finds a yield statement. And the yield statement now says to the Salabim mechanism, hey, this component car, I want you to hold it for me for five time units. In this case, I give it the mode drive, could be anything, it's just the name. But in the next five time units from now, which is we are still in time zero uh, 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 in the end of the day, put it on an event list uh, for scheduled time five. And that's it. But because the car has now changed state, it changed the state from a current state into another state. It goes into a scheduled state because as soon as you hit a yield with a process method, could be one of the nine process methods that are available. Salabim now knows that, hey, car is no longer in the current state. I want to look for the next component on the future event list, and that's the one I'm going to activate next. That is what's going to happen next. So what's happening next is that the component that's next in line, which is bike, is uh, now activated. It's taken off the future event list, which you can see here. It's on time zero. That's supposed to be activated. And um, we're going into line 10 in the process method of bike. And you see here uh, in the trace uh, a little plus again behind the 10, meaning bike is now current. So it went from a scheduled state into a current state. 
and this is an instantaneous moment in time. We're current, so we're in charge of the process method, just like we were with car. The process starts again, basically. So the first thing that happens is in the code, we're going into the while true loop and the first uh, thing we hit is the yield statement. Again, this is a process interaction call. Uh, the method hold is called upon the component bike and hold uh, puts the component into a scheduled state. It has, uh, uh, it needs to hold it for three time units. As since we are on time zero, it puts it on the future event list at time three. That will be the next um, component which is in line. And since bike went from current into scheduled state, so it changed state from current to something else, in this case current, uh, uh, scheduled, means that that's the next thing that's going to happen. Again, Salabim checks what's the next thing in line. It's on time three, it's bike. And actually, it's on time three, so the time now jumps immediately from zero to three. That's the beauty of a discrete event simulation. We're jumping from one moment in time to the next moment in time. So we are taking bike off the future event list. And again, it's current. So it's in a current state. And um, it's going to look for the next statement. And at this code, we only have a yield statement that comes after line 12, so it jumps to the next yield, to the next process interaction call, and again it's in a hold whereby bike is now put again on the scheduled event list by holding it for two time units. And since it's holding it for two time units, and it was at time 3, we are now going to be activating it at time 5. So, again, the bike has changed state from current to scheduled, so the next thing is we're checking again what is next on the event list, which is car, supposed to be activated at time 5. And we are jumping now from time 3 to time 5. Again, the car is taken off the future event list. And we are now in line 6. And you see here again, repeat, repetitive, but it's a plus. Again, we're activating the car current state. And the current state, car is in control of the process. And it's actually continuing from the last yield where it left off. So as you know, yield is just a uh, standard uh, Python uh, uh, statement whereby you keep your state and the next time you call this method, it continues at the next, the next line, uh, which is at line seven. That's what happens. So the car now uh, becomes goes to the next statement, yield statement in this case, and it becomes scheduled again. So the car is being hold here for one time unit from time five. So at the time six, it will have to be activated next. And this is how we keep going through our code. And now, of course, the next thing is we moved again from current to scheduled in this case, but from, from current to another uh, uh, state and we are checking the next event in line which is bike and that's taken off the event list again it's current so you see it's continuous at the moment we are in the current state uh, at time five and uh, we we are uh, being activated so we are going to go to our next uh, um, statement and since we're in a while true loop again we're hitting a yield with a process interaction call, with a, schedule, uh, a scheduled uh, uh, process interaction call. And so we are getting from time five into the next activation time at eight, since we're holding it for three time units. So that's basically it. We are now um, for our, from our total simulation of 10 time units, we are now at five time units. So we're halfway through our simulation. So our next event is um, on the event list uh, time six car. So we're jumping to time six car is now taken off the event list. It becomes current. It's activated again. Line seven. You can see that here it jumps to a next hold. And um, the next line in the while true loop is an other process interaction call. whereby we're getting into a scheduled state again. We've been hold for five time units. Since we're in time six now, the activation time will be 11. Uh, 
becomes almost boring now because we're going to the next uh, component in line, which is bike. Bike again is taken off the future event list. We're now at time eight, jumped from time six to time eight. And we are now in the current state of bike. We are in the hold method uh, where it we last uh, uh, entered and we are now coming out of it. So we are getting into a scheduled state. We're holding it for two time units from time eight being activated at time 10. And then we are going to look for the next event in line, which is bike. And it's actually interesting because bike is scheduled before main and main is our uh, end of our simulation. Main is in control of the simulation and it will be activated at time 10. The priority is infinite. Basically, there's priorities and bike would have priority zero goes before main. So we're still looking at the, the bike, activating the bike before the, 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 the program stops. Next is bikes taken off the future event list, becomes current and goes into the next statement, which is uh, we're now at line 13. The activation activations at line 13. We're coming out of the yield, going to the next one into a scheduled state, holding for three time units from time 10. So we're supposed to be activated at time 13. But since we are actually now at the end of our program, main is activated at time 10. And the program stops and the other two events are no longer uh, being called because we are activating uh, the whole uh, uh, um, simulation at time 10 to stop our simulation. And that is the, the process of uh, seeing the code together with the trace and the future event list.